as we were uh, discussing here, lectin is t- is today's topic. Yeah, so you know, if you have a a white coat and glasses and MD next to your name, yeah, that's a marketing weapon. Ooh, I like that. That um, can be used by the food industry. Yeah, it, it certifies to, to, you as a as a bean basher. Yes. With that white coat. <laughs> right. Whatever you say is is uh, you know gospel truth to the masses. Yeah. Which can do a lot of harm. Yeah. So it's very confusing. Right, coming from different angles. So it, it's let's be honest here. This is a fad diet, right? Uh, a lectin-free diet is a fad diet. And because lectin science is so complex, and you know you have lectins are in everything. There's different isoforms of lectins. You have them in viruses. You have them in bacteria. You have them in plants. You have them in animals. We produce lectins. It's a very very complex protein, and um, it's it's very hard to say we know exactly what it does. I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run on muck, this is what he does. You've been had, and what makes matters worse, is you're allowing it. A lifetime of nutritional deception has forced us into the fight for our lives. We are the plant-based riot. We are here to tear down that curtain of secrecy created by our very own American food industry. A plant-based diet and a disease-free life are not out of reach. Make the choice. All right. Guys, we want to give a quick shout-out to our producer here, uh, Greg, uh, at Greg's Guitar Lessons on Facebook, and the email is at Greg's Guitar Lessons.com. Greg is our mix master for the podcast. Also, I just found out he is a fellow alumni of mine from Columbia College, Chicago. So, uh, way to go, Windy City. Yeah, uh, we owe a tremendous uh, amount of gratitude and thanks to Greg for taking what initially sounds like audio diarrhea and making it into <laughs> something very pleasant to listen to. So, uh, Greg, thank you so much for all your your time and effort keep it up so guys how can how can you guys help me kind of unravel this uh plant paradox uh being that the lectin issue in my mind wasn't really a conversation uh, a few years ago before this current profiteering angle like are, are we are we manipulating diets for profit is that what's happening here yeah absolutely yeah um this is a this is a really unique circumstance where the professionals in the medical industry are now creating these ripples in nutritional science and they are using pseudoscience to basically create, to put a spotlight on and demonize yet another nutrient, which this one is, this one is lectin. So we have, um, you know, doctors, specifically surgeons um, that are making these very, very alarming statements about dieting and basically telling people um, to remove lectins from their diet because of their ability to bind to these sugars or these carbohydrates in the cell. Um, you know, they these people are speculating because the science isn't there to support it that when the protein and the sugar bind together, that this interaction somehow creates a disruption in the body that can cause inflammation or endocrine disruption or um, accumulation and clumping of the blood. Um, and that might be true for a very small population, but on the grand scheme of, um, you know, human population, this, this doesn't happen. Um, so it's very alarming that the health industry and the medical industry are now pushing this pseudoscience and basically telling people to remove fruits and vegetables and beans from their diet when we have this entire massive library in you know the National Institute of Health that says fruits, diets, and beans do nothing but create healthy bodies and create healthy living and healthy lifestyle and reduce potential diseases. So do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, so you know, if you have a a white coat and glasses and MD next to your name. Yeah. That's a marketing weapon. Oh, I like that. That um, 
can be used by the food industry. Yeah, it, it certifies to, to, you as a as a bean basher. Yes. With that white coat. <laughs> right. Whatever you say is is uh, you know gospel truth to the masses. Yeah. Which can do a lot of harm. Yeah. So it's very confusing. Right. Coming from different angles. So, so it, it's let's be honest here. This is a fad diet, right? The a lectin free diet is a fad diet. Um, it's trying to sway the pendulum in yet another direction. Um, and, um, basically the lectin free diet is about avoiding grains, legumes. Um, this is kind of, it's, it's kind of bothering me because at the farmer's market, a lot of people have been telling me, a lot of customers have been telling me, do, they, do these have legumes in it? Because I can't eat legumes. <laughs> and hey. it, like, it just, it's like a slap in my face yeah. when I hear that. I'm like, oh my goodness. So what do you say? We've when that lost happens? another one. <laughs> you know, come back, come back to the light. <laughs> and, and and when we talked about the soy episode, remember we talked about legumes being this this product that has helped mm -hmm. civilization right leave the dark ages and come into modern society. And yeah. the rest of the world outside of the United States relies heavily on legumes, right? So yeah. um I, I like that. I like what you said. Like if you you know, these these people should we say their names? Should we not say their names? Let's not get sued. Uh, everyone knows Let's not get sued, yeah. Um, they're weaponizing their degree, essentially. Yes. And they're saying, because I have this coat and I, you know, I, I am a surgeon, um, mm -hmm. I can make this statement unchallenged. Right. Right. And now you have people coming to the farmer's market saying, I can't, I can't eat these. And you're like, okay. Do these have legumes in it? First of all, tell me what a legume is. Tell me what it is that you're trying not, and then spell legume. If you can tell me <laughs> and spell it, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. right? I'll support your bean bashing. You know, like, legume is actually um, an old and outdated term for describing beans. You know, it's actually uh, Fabaceae. That's, you know, the family of beans and peas. Papileonaceous. You know, these are... Bring it. The modern the modern term for describing beans, um, it is legume is is what you would consider your 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 grandfather, your grandfather's way of describing a bean. Mm. <laughs> so let's bring let's be, bring beans to the modern age again. <laughs> say those say, say those names again, please. Fabaceae. Fabaceae. Okay, and then what was the other one? That's the family of beans. Okay. And papilionaceous <laughs> is the expression of a bean flower. Okay, so if I were to write the two, next harry potter book those would be my character names <laughs> <laughs> beans are beautiful and with that um i want to say that uh the silly the silliness about uh the lectin scare is that if you're if you if you're cooking your legumes your beans as you should because nobody eats nobody eats dry beans that's silly to think if you're cooking your beans get an, get an instant pot cook your beans for the proper at the proper temperature it take you know you get your instant pot it takes all the guesswork out of it 95 percent or more of the lectin content is removed in the cooking process so you've got beans and rice that are virtually lectin free yeah these are you know like the lectins that are in beans they they can be harmful if you eat if you have them in a raw state but you know like i like i said before um nobody's eating these things raw However, tell you a little story about beans. Um, I had a friend um, years ago. He he wanted to get into sprouting, and so he started sprouting black beans, right? Uh, frijoles negro. Sexy. He he sprouted some black beans, and then after a few days of sprouting them, they, they didn't really even sprout that much. He started he started like you know eating these things raw, like chewing on them. You know, like, you know, like just eating them like corn chips, you know, <laughs> and um, and then a few hours later, he started telling me about how he was getting like really bad diarrhea, mm -hmm. you know, and he was like, I don't know what to do, Mike. It's you know, like I'm on the pot every five minutes, and I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> like, why? Like, um, you know, he was kind of panicked. He was he was um, kind of kicking himself for like for eating these raw beans. Yeah. And then he did a little bit of Googling research and found, oh, you know, um, black beans, 
when raw, have a lot of lectin in them. But there are other beans like, like mung beans and soybeans and lentil that have very, very, very low levels of lectin. So that if you sprout those, you can actually eat them raw mm. uh, without any digestive issues. Sprouted. Right. So there are some beans that have to absolutely be cooked and should not be eaten raw and should not be sprouted. Or if you do sprout them, got to cook them. Right. So this would be things like black beans, pinto beans, and of kidney. course, kidney beans. Woo. If you ever eat a, a raw kidney bean, um, it could be deadly. So be careful, people. But, you know, typically you find kidney beans in Chile, and they're cooking those things for a Days. day yeah. or more Days, yeah. hot temperatures. Yeah. So, you know, you you eliminate the lectins by those long, hot temperature cooks. Um, so, you know, use uh, use your common sense and... You know, some beans you can sprout and eat raw. Mung, if you if you ever want to get into raw beans, um, try the mung bean. They're super good. The the super bean. sweet and crunchy. Yeah. Very good. Well, gentlemen, let's get into this. Right. <laughs> wow. Good morning. We're back in the podcast studio with Plant Based Riot in the garden, as it were. At what time, Brian? 5.24 a.m. Ouch. And what is the... It's a lot less colder today than previous weeks. Feels nice, right? It's spring morning. Yeah. We're getting into spring. Yeah. Gentlemen, unraveling this plant pot paradox with me here, this lectin issue wasn't even a conversation prior to this new profiteering angle. Would you agree? I would I know this is kind of a, a spin-off of our soy episode, which pushed us into lectin, which is opening up more questions that I have for yes, you guys today. It was, it was necessary to kind of do this brief episode on lectins. We're going to try to wrap this one up in like less than an hour. All right. Like so we're going to challenge ourselves. Well, we're dads. We got uh, we have to get, get the kids to school yes, in a little while. Yes. Like this is part of our routine. The clock's ticking. I haven't even made my kids lunch yet, so I got to I gotta get on that. Okay. I'm slacking. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he makes his own lunch, so he is slacking. Ouch. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you're listening to this podcast or watching the uh, YouTube channel, Plant Based Riot. Uh, we want to thank Whisper Farms. Whisper Farms is a co-op of backyard farms and gardens providing greens and fruits available at the Atwater Village Farmer's Market. Come check him out. His name is Moringa Mike. That's me. And Mike, spring is here, man. What's what's new at the market, uh, celery microgreens, and uh, I'm also doing beet, bull's blood meat, uh, <laughs> beet microgreens. <laughs> wow! Um, Say that again. Yeah, what, what is it? Bull's blood, beets. That so, sounds like it just it's going to put hair on your chest. That yeah, sounds yes. It's, is that even vegan? It's earthy. You know, it's it's got that earthy beety flavor. It's very red, and you know it's related to chard. Okay. It's a it's a super delicious microgreen um, that a chef from Dune, L.A. has been asking me to grow for him. Wow! But all the customers are they want some of it too, so I'm um, growing a lot of it. It'll be ready to cut this Saturday morning. Well, it's a leafy green. It's a leafy green. Yeah. So I mean, you can grow a beet into a root, or you can grow it small and just harvest a leaf. And so that's what I'm doing. Microgreen. Just a leaf. It's it's this crimson red leaf that uh, has a real earthy spinachy flavor. Wow! Mm. And for those those of you men out there that want to increase your performance in the sack with your lady friend, make sure you buy lots of those those <laughs> beets because lots of nitrates and nitrites that will yes, increase the, your nitric oxide and nature's Viagra. You, yes, help you perform a little better. <laughs> Yes, vasodilation. Yes. <laughs> well, on that note, we are the Plant Based Riot, a weekly, commutable length, evidence based call to action conversation about living a healthy and disease free life. Follow us on Instagram at Plant Based Riot. Visit the all new, amazing Plant Based Riot Facebook page. Um, this episode, uh, as we talked about earlier, will be available on the YouTube at the Plant Based Riot. Um, my name's Dan. Uh, father of three plant-based powered kids and uh, a, an amazing, patient, lovely, sexy wife and uh, part-time cameraman, part-time gardener. 
these days. I'm Mike Wood. I'm the plant uh, guru, as they say. The hustler. <laughs> I'm the plant hustler. Yes, I move a lot of greens <laughs> in my day. Uh, perhaps uh, a heck of a lot more in the near future. <laughs> Trying to get into fruit as well. I want to be a fruit hustler. That's. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home dad of two rambunctious boys who helped me in the garden. And uh, my wife Mandy is a, a soaper and uh, a cook as well. And a masseuse. So yeah, I find me at the Atwater Village Farmer's Market because uh, that's where I'm spending my days moving the greens. Love it. I'm Brian. I'm a metabolic scientist, uh, father of three... Not very rambunctious kids, but three kids nonetheless. Um, married to a... I got to beat your adjectives now. Like That was I'm, a lot. Hey, I'm bringing it today. So bro. my wife, who sits upon the throne of my heart, is a wonderful, incredible, loving, caring... Is that enough? Woman. One more, one more. Who supports my every endeavor, and uh, I am hopefully, hopelessly devoted to her for that. There, good. That sounded good. We're, we're probably all going to have good weekends after that. Yeah, after let's, that let's, description. Let's get one of these in. Yeah. <laughs> all right. On the bell. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, as we were uh, discussing here, lectin is to, is today's topic, guys. Uh, and uh, I'm like the, the fantastic uh, human guinea pig here. What, Mike? What is a lectin? Like what? We we we. I know our audience has already heard the soy, and if not. This episode is a is a partner to that, but lectin specifically, and I want to. I have uh, a couple lectin. of questions I want to bring you guys, but start me from the beginning. So lectin is a glycoprotein. It is yes. It's um it's something that's in all seeds, and it's in all plants, in all animals, in all fruits, and, and there are many different kinds of them, but um, these are kind of like um, defenses that plants and animals produce they're they're ubiquitous they're everywhere um everyone gets everyone eats them <laughs> in varying degrees so yeah not all lectins are the same but they are they are everywhere okay <laughs> and to to build upon that uh not all lectins are the same so they're lectins are like a collective term for proteins that um, bind to carbohydrates or cross-link to carbohydrates, uh, various types of carbohydrates. So um, they have specific interactions where these proteins will bind to very specific types of carbohydrates that um, line the surface of cells in the body. So um, there's a lot of speculation out there that when this glycation happens when a protein and a carbohydrate come together that this can cause um, adverse effects in the body and again so it's considered an anti-nutrient it is considered an anti-nutrient and there's speculation that when glycoproteins or when lectins interact with carbohydrates they cause a decrease in vitamin and mineral absorption and, and all these other things that occur as a result but again the evidence out there is very sketchy and very limited and this is another circumstance where a scare smear campaign comes out and the research has to catch up with the books or the articles that are kind of leading the charge in another pseudoscience case. And as Mike had said, like these lectins are, they're in bacteria, they're in viruses, they're in plants, they're in animals, they're in fungus, they're, they're everywhere. So, um, you know, this new lectin free diet fad, living a lectin-free life is implausible and almost impossible. So, uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of evidence out there that suggests that lectins have a, have a really healthy role in the body. Um, and we'll get into that in more detail later. Um, but one of them is that lectins have a glycemic reducing effect on blood sugar, which mm -hmm. as we know from all the stuff we talk about with diabetes, the more you can lower your blood sugar, the better you are at controlling the pathogenesis of diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is a this is a really interesting topic that we're going to talk about today. Wow, uh, didn't plan on learning all of this at five a.m., but that's happening. 
I'm just making it up. So <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. All right. So this uh, this begs the question then: What is the big deal? What what is the big deal with all this lectin controversy? Where did it start? Why why are we even having this conversation? Yeah. So it, to me, it seems like there's um, there's a lot of uh, controversy about uh, the mass feeding uh, on an industrial scale of seeds for livestock. Um, and so, you know, when you talk about factory farming, when you talk about, you know, pigs, goats, cows, um, chickens, they're being fed corn and soybeans, um, which have lectins in them. And but farmers, these are dry, dry beans are, that are ground up or are they cooked. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, farmers, they don't cook for their animals. They will take raw beans, grind them up and just feed them raw to their animals. You know, like, can you imagine trying to cook in a pressure cooker uh, beans for your chickens? Like a thousand pounds a day to feed cattle. And that's in, That would be like feeding another country. Um, the food that they could have been eaten. That the that particular country would eat, yeah. So, do it's, these farmers grow their own beans to feed their animals, or are they purchasing some do. these? I would say these days, if you're an animal farmer, you're buying grains from grain farmers. So right? you don't go outside of your lane. You, you're if you're an animal farmer, you only raise animals, and then you that's you import. a generalization. Okay. Yes, um, not all do that, but yeah. Um, so it's it's silly how we. Um, in order to keep the industrial machine going, we're just shoveling raw, raw beans and raw grains into the animals, because that's the cheapest thing to do. And so there's quite a bit of lectin that animals are eating. Um, and so the controversy is that if you eat animal meat, milk especially, and eggs, there's a lot of lectin in there. So you know if you're if you're really scared of lectin, then it it stands to reason that Animal products are the biggest culprit for getting lectin in your diet, not eating cooked, <laughs> properly prepared legumes and and cereal grain. So, you know, it's uh, it's really just common sense here. So that that is an interesting thing that you had said because it made me think of what type of dent could we put in, you know, world hunger by mm-hmm. taking these beans that we're feeding animals so that we can get meat right and like redistribute them to you know other populations that don't have food i mean like what what, yeah, kind, 70%. Of, what kind of dent could we make in like world hunger with with the food that we feed animals so that we could have steak and milk and cheese and 70 percent of the grains and, and legumes that are grown in the u.s yeah. are specifically for animals that so, we eat so 70%. is it a lower quality 70 percent is it like is it no like, that's just we specifically grow um grow it for the animals to eat okay um so yeah i mean you could you could solve world hunger 10 times over if we were to stop industrial scale feed uh production for animals but that's not profitable no not not at all i mean you know uh you could say i've heard a professor told me once that uh if you took the fertilizer budget for golf courses in california you could feed everyone on the continent of africa easy crazy you know, but like you said, it it's it's all about the money. Yeah. Um. So it's all about the greens. It's all about the greens. Yes. And you know, I think um, if if we educate people on how to help themselves, and how to how to use powerful technology in responsible ways, that's how we're gonna, you know, make the world a more responsible, uh, equitable place. So wake so, up. So with this rising population of bean bashers that are mm-hmm. anti-lectin, uh, what percent of that population do you think realizes that lectins are in meat and cheese and dairy? Because there's there's a there's a bigger influence that's controlling people's fear of lectins that's coming from that that new book, The Plant Paradox. So so how many what what percent of the population do you think realizes that okay I'm avoiding plants because they have seeds and seeds have lectin and I don't want to eat those which means I'm going to eat more of option B 
which is which is animal products and oil right so yeah i mean i don't think a lot of people uh, are making that jump or making or making that distinction um so you think by you saying it we're now unveiling this truth that a lot of people don't realize because to answer your question yeah. you know where is this where's this controversy coming from i mean now it's coming from that book that new york Times bestseller the plant paradox right that's what's that's what's leading the charge in this so are the readers of that book making the jump to understand that okay if you're going to completely avoid these food groups over here because they have lectin in it and you're going to eat option b which is going to be i mean what other things can you eat and you, if yeah. you're not eating fruits legumes grain and you are what you eat let's be honest so you, yeah if you're going to avoid the plant-based diet mm -hmm. which is legumes and cereal grain mm -hmm. Uh, and you go for the meat instead, you're actually getting uh, the legumes and cereal grains that have been transmuted into animal flesh. What do you call that? Bioaccumulation, right? We we talked or, about that. Or, you know, biological, you know, transmutation or, yeah. you know, you are what you eat. So an animal is going to eat the same things that yeah. you may be avoiding. Yeah. And so by eating meat, dairy and eggs, you're basically getting more of the same. Yeah. Um, much more concentrated. Um, so it's silly to think that you'll be avoiding lectins by eating animal meat. You know, even if you're, you're making the argument for like pastured meats and pastured chickens, they still they still have lectin. Um, so there's no avoiding it. Um, and uh, plant-based diet is the best way to, you know, have a, a, a diet where you don't have these certain dangerous types of lectins yeah. in your diet, like from beans. So Dan, like what, what have you heard? Uh, like on like the, the main social media channels and things like that about lectins. Have you, have you had any interactions well, with this, it before this episode and before the creation of this episode? No, just in terms of my first question was, was what's all this lectin stuff about? Right. I, I haven't really heard about this before. Right. It's, it's a new thing to yeah. demonize, right? So, and it's coming from this, you know, New York Times bestseller book, uh, The Plant Paradox, and the title is The Hidden Dangers in Healthy Foods That Cause Disease and Weight Gain. Um, yeah, they say avoid nightshade plants like tomatoes and Yeah, because of the seeds. And potatoes. Yeah. But see, like, go, going back to cooking, like, okay, the one thing you can say is, you know, people eat raw tomatoes. That's That's pretty common. But, like, are people eating pounds and pounds of raw tomatoes every day? That's mm -hmm. kind of rare. Yeah. Right. So, what about tomato sauce? Yeah. When you cook the tomato sauce, you reduce the lectin content by almost a hundred percent. That's something that people eat in in a greater quantity. Is tomato yeah. sauce, but yeah. you're good if you cook it. Um, who eats raw eggplant or raw potato? Right. That's because eggplants have all those seeds in there, right? So that's where the lectin is. You cut open an eggplant, you can see the rows of seeds. Right. But who you can't? Nobody eats raw eggplant. They're right. super bitter. Right. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get it down. Um, same with potatoes, you zucchini, know, zucchini, squash, all those things. Right. Yeah. You'd be hard pressed to find someone eating raw potato and yeah. eggplant. So it's not really an issue it's, then. No. Well, it's it's being turned it into an issue through you know this book. This this book is creating an issue that I think is exacerbating the truth or, or embellishing on the truth. Um, you know, and, and, and as we talked about last night, I have to say this because, you know, looking into this book and this, the title of this book and the content of this book more deeply, um, the content, you know, the, the title of the book, again, is, is um, The Hidden Dangers in Healthy Food That Cause Disease and Weight Gain. And then the content of the book talks about basically the, um, how a lectin-free diet can reduce or reverse pre-existing diseases. So now you have a title of the book that suggests that lectins are causing disease and weight gain. And then you have a content of the book that is suggesting that if you remove lectins from your diet, you can reverse pre-existing conditions. So I stand here scratching my head and saying, okay, what is your angle on lectin? Is it causing diseases and inflammation and causing, um, you know, conditions like I have like a whole list of things that, you know, they're talking about lectins are causing digestive distress. Okay. 
which your friend said with the black beans, okay? Maybe right. he did have gastric distress, and maybe it was because black beans have a high level of lectin, and maybe the sprouting didn't happen long enough. Or maybe when you sprout a br- black bean, you still have to cook it, right? To, Absolutely. To, right. So that was just like a common sense error, right? right. Um, skin irritations are associated with consuming lectins. Uh, brain fog, chronic fatigue, inflammation. Inflammation is the big one. So... Um, you know, I'm left here scratching my head wondering if this guy is trying to tell me that lectin induces those things or if removing lectin will reverse those conditions that are pre-existing. Um, and you know, we, we can't ignore the fact that this, this bean basher that was, you know, that's sitting, that sitting at the throne of bean bashing here is creating the ripples. He's creating a pseudo based you know uh diet that's based on pseudoscience and he's also providing people with um the cure which is buy my supplements because he has a whole line of supplements and if you look at the ingredients of his supplements there is milk <laughs> in the supplements and mike what did you say is in there's, milk there's lots lots of lectin in milk. okay yeah. so you even, know even pasture raised milk so people, you know, while this guy is trying to create an empire and tell people to remove these very healthy, anti-carcinogenic, anti-diabetic, blood pressure reducing, glycemic controlling beans, right? Mm-hmm. He's telling people to remove those from his diet, which we can't, we can't do. It's in everything. Right. Um, he's also saying, if you need help doing so, buy my product. Yeah. Listen to my podcast. I'm creating this empire and people are buying into it. What's currently happening right now is that people are starting to m- move towards plant-based diets and that has the meat industry scared. You know, so like right now only about 5% of the US uh, identifies as vegetarian or vegan and if that percentage were to tick up by to, you know, 7, 8, 9%, 10% that's that that equates to billions of dollars in lost yeah. revenue. Yeah. You know, so I am, I'm very skeptical when someone starts to to say, you know, put on a white coat and say, eat more animal meat, um, avoid the legumes and grain, because you know, like this late in the game, in a world where there's more humans than ever before, we can't afford to be eating more meat. That's com- that's a completely um, ecologically unsustainable thing to do. If you want to talk about the the um, environmental impacts of animal agriculture versus you know just eating the legumes and the grains um, talk about climate change this is the biggest topic on, on on you know in our political arena at the moment oh but it doesn't exist our, yeah. fe- our fearless leader says it doesn't exist right so yeah. climate change doesn't exist <laughs> yeah. and keep eating meat yeah it's like yeah big oil big meat you know it, it's like um these huge juggernauts of the old world traditional way of life they're going out kicking and screaming because people are starting to wake up and so they're trying marketing is being used to influence our, our dietary habits yeah 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 um, that's- we, we've talked about that time and time again and you know something that needs to be said before we move on to the next question is one of the things this, you know, this doctor, this author, this expert, and we don't want to give him too much screen time. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. Right? So, but one of the things he's not mentioning is what beans have to offer us, right? So, massive source of protein, right? Plant-based protein, yeah. Nutritionally dense vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, reducing your risk of cancer, better glucose metabolism, preventing fatty liver disease controlling appetite so there's all these positive effects that the book doesn't talk about and Mm -hmm. um you know everything that he has presented has been a theoretical concern that holds no weight and no water um so i'm I'm done so um very good you know we're gonna we're gonna keep cracking this whip and uh i got i got a couple more really um mind mind blowing questions for you guys that i didn't have answers to so All right, great. We just discussed uh, a few 
interesting things that I'm learning about the white coats and credibility in our world these days. Um, everybody can hear the birds chirping and the, the water running in the and watercress the, the garden. The sun here. is coming out. I know. How about that? It's kind yeah. of pretty, actually. We should open this up a little bit more. Um, what illnesses uh, do leptins become associated with? Is this a new thing? Um, is there any truth to these associations that leptins can create an illness to make you sick? Um, and why are we only discovering this now? What's all, why? Again, I, I understand that this is a new fad diet that's being pushed uh, in, in a profiteering angle, but is there any, um, is there any truth to any of this? So the lectin, lectin's impact on illness is very, very complex. And as I said earlier, um, the lectin protein likes to bind to carbohydrates. So inside the lining of the gut and in any animal, uh, there's a lot of these uh, carbohydrate, um, different types of carbohydrates that basically stick to the cell surface. And um, when lectins are consumed and they can interact with these carbohydrates, they basically become activated, right? So imagine like you have the surface of a cell and you have these fingers protruding from the cell, okay? Those are the types of carbohydrates, but there's oh, oh, monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, all these different types of carbohydrate sub, uh, substrates and lectins bind to them very specifically. So some of them might want to bind to an oligosaccharide. Some of them might want to bind to a monosaccharide. So it's very, very, very complex science. So we can't say that all lectins are created the same. So think of think of like lectin binding to carbohydrates as like a lock and key sort of thing. So the, the lectin protein is the key. And once it binds to the carbohydrate, it can then open like the, the lock, right? Yep. Um, and so in a sense, lectins can act as um, an antigen. Okay, and it can and it can basically create like an allergic response. This is in a very small percent of the population. So we're starting to see that some people just like gluten, just like peanuts, just like eggs, just like milk have intolerances to these proteins. Right. So there perhaps is a very small percent of the population that should not be eating seeds or products that have lectin in it. Right. So it's just, it, you know just like anyone that has an allergy to something that's a small population. And um, so when this happens and some people can have an allergic response, um, some of the illnesses that are associated with this is leaky gut syndrome, right? So they believe so some, so some research says that when a lectin protein binds to those carbohydrate fingers, it causes the tight junction between cells. You have these proteins that hold cells together very, very close very tight and close so that way nothing can seep through so some people s have seen that when lectins bind to the carbohydrates that you get leaky gut syndrome which means those cells become farther and farther apart and things that aren't supposed to get into the body can get in through those get in through the space between the cells uh, and that might be true for a small percent of the population right that are allergic or have an intolerance to lectin and they would know this you would know this because or there would be a a chronic illness associated with when you eat these foods that have lectin. And if you have a chronic illness that you are experiencing every time you eat, then you should go see a doctor and you should get tested to see if you do have an intolerance to lectin. So they would run a series of tests on you to see if, you know, or if you want to self, if you want to self check, remove lectins from your diet, you know, as much as you can or reduce them and then reintroduce them and see if you're still having the same type of impact. You know, the same way we talked about with soy, if you think you're allergic to soy. So they speculate that, you know, when this happens and proteins can then get into the body, then you have an inflammatory response, right? Um, they also believe that, you know, the illnesses that you can have are endocrine disruption and cell signaling disruption and autoimmune disorders. And, uh, you can have mitogens, you know, that activate, which basically tell the cell to, to kill itself. Like you, you get cell death. But again, all of this is in, um, very small populations. So, so, and the research that is out there to show that these illnesses occur 
are limited. So, and if they are out there, we see them in isolated lectins and in cell culture. We don't see this happening in human bodies. So we can't say that cell culture mimics human physiology. And that's, that's what we're starting to see. All right. Wow. So thank you for that. Brian. Yep. That was yep. un- yeah, the human body is a lot stronger than we might think. And, uh, you know, we've adapted for at least 10,000 years or longer to be able to assimilate legumes and grains and, and cooking them. It has been part of our evolution as well, you know? So like our, our brains got bigger, our stomachs got smaller because of that externalized digestion Mm -hmm. of food. So I think that, uh, like you said, not everyone is the same, but if you're eating cooked beans and rice, uh, you're pretty safe for the most part. So Brian, Brian, you kind of talked a little bit about, um, how lectin interacts with our body Mm -hmm. and when it it can cause good things and it can cause bad things. Um, Specifically though, um, what does lectin do in our body? Like if you can wrap that up for me in a little bit tighter package, just so I can understand that. um, Just, I'm just trying to get the background. Sure. So, so um, we're, (laughs) we're still trying to figure that out. Like the role, yeah, the role that lectins, because lectins, they, you know, Lectins interact with uh, ev- everything. Um, you know, w- if you look at, uh, you know, I was telling you guys about like glucosamine, right? Like people take glucosamine to help reduce joint pain. Glu- gl- glucosamine is, an, is a deactivator of lectin. So there's a whole body of science that shows how glucosamine will deactivate lectin and reduce arthritic pain in the joints, right? So... Um, and because lectin science is so complex and, you know, you have lectins are in everything. There's different isoforms of lectins. You have them in viruses, you have them in bacteria, you have them in plants, you have them in animals. We produce lectins. It's a very, very complex protein. And, um, it's, it's very hard to say we know exactly what it does. So I can provide you with the facts that we currently know. We know that, you know, lectins can be toxic to the body, uh, especially in, um, what is it, castor castor oil? Oh, castor beans. Castor beans, yeah. So when they extract castor oil from castor beans, do you know anything about that? I mean, I know know that uh, castor oil is is an industrial lubricant. Mm -hmm. Um, The castor bean plant is pretty toxic. Uh, It actually grows all over LA as these like spiky you know, uh, bean pods. I mean, it's not, it's not an edible bean. It's a poisonous bean, Yep. but it has industrial use. And there was, there was research done, I, I think in the early 1900s where they fed the castor oil to rabbits okay. and the rabbits were dying. Right. So that's where the whole lectin thing kind of started is. So that's okay. a fact. We know that we know that beans contain lectin. We know that castor oil is highly toxic to humans and animals. Okay. Um, we know that kidney beans, as Mike, you want to talk about that. That's a fact. We know that, uh, you know, it's been proven that um, kidney beans have been associated with causing uh, bouts of food poisoning. But it's right. not food poisoning that we're experiencing with kidney beans. It's it's an excess of lectin. Right. So uh, that bean just naturally has a, houses a lot of lectin. Right. Kidney okay. beans are, are probably have the highest level of lectin of any bean. Okay. And I, I believe that if you were to eat... You know, a, a, like a handful of raw, um, of raw kidney beans, it could be deadly. Yep. Um, and uh, if you don't properly cook them at the right temperature, um, that could cause severe diarrhea and gas. Okay. So here we haven't we have a case of the bean is no different than eating raw meat, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to eat raw meat, right? Mm-hmm. Some some people do, right? Um, but there's a high probability that if you get a piece of steak and you eat it raw, E. coli, you're at risk of making yourself sick. So in, in that light, a raw kidney bean and a raw piece of steak are no different, <laughs> right? I mean, wow, does, that, yeah. does that make sense? I, right? I like, get that. Right? And eat same thing with when you're drinking raw milk. A lot of people are drinking raw milk. Like you are now... Listeria. You are now exposing yourself to a potentially more hazardous product 
because you're drinking it raw right so we can say raw is raw and that's the that's the great thing about cooking Mm -hmm. is that we've now eliminated these these chances of us getting sick from food right Mm -hmm. so the bean is no different than those um so we know so again what does it do in the body we know that certain beans are highly toxic if they're eaten raw we know that the lectin protein binds to carbohydrates, as I as I said to you before. It's like this lock and key interaction. However, um, there's research out there that shows that when um, carbohydrates uh, along the cell bind to lectin, it deactivates the lectin. So, what does lectin do in the body? We're, we're really not sure. Wow. Um, we know that lectins are in everything. So we know that eliminating them is merely impossible and we, we can't we can't eliminate them from the diet we also know that there is a small population that could potentially be allergic to lectins right they might have a lectin intolerance just like every other popu- just like every other small population that has an allergy to some type of food right? so again i'm coming back to this this is fairly a non-issue because it's everywhere and we're not able to do anything about it and it's, it's a distraction is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's the bigger question. Yeah. Look at the blue zones, right? The blue zones where people are living um, longer than anywhere else in the world. You know, the greatest population of centenarians. And they're eating lectins. And they're eating, they're eating a lectin diet, <laughs> or at least what I should say is they're not worried about lectins, and they're eating a plant-based diet of beans and rice, or you know, legumes and cereal grains cooked, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I pulled and, up a chart um, to support yeah. that about um, the blue zone. So uh, Sardinia, Italy. Sardinia. That's yeah. another one. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I don't know. Yeah, don't that, know. that's another blue oh, zone. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. So they say eat uh, for long, healthy living, blue zones, Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, um, Low Melinda, California. Eat lots of whole grains. Mike, what's in whole grains? Lectin. What? Eat a diet high in soy. Mike, what's in soy? Lectin. Okay. <laughs> um, eat a diet high in legumes. Mike, what's in legumes? Lectins. <laughs> lots of lectins. Um, eat lots of fava beans. And I don't know what the content of lectin is in fava beans, but... You know, fava, fava beans, uh, they're, they're one of the things that should be cooked, I, I believe. Yeah. Those are the big ones, right? Those are real big beans. Right. So yeah. you're not going to eat a giant raw bean, right? No. I, I believe some people do that and experience irritation mm. so that's that's, that's a sign that, right yeah that's a sign yeah the blue zones are awash with beans <laughs> people are eating them daily they're eating a cup of beans a day yeah and guess what they're living into the hundreds <laughs> and do you know what the lectin content is of nuts like cashews are, are, oh, they, yes. are they in there yeah um you know all nuts have lectins as okay. well yeah so you know i would personally say um i have um if I ever eat uh, raw, dry dry nuts, I actually will get headaches. I don't know if that's because of dehydration, because it's that's salty. It's well, you know, I'll eat even raw, even mm-hmm. raw nuts mm-hmm. without salt, I'll get a headache from. Could be potentially from lectin, or could be because it's you know it's dehydrating to eat these dry nuts. So what I do is I soak um, a mixture of nuts and seeds mm-hmm. overnight, kind of mm-hmm. like an oatmeal. Mm-hmm. I'll soak it in water overnight in the fridge, and then I'll cook it in a pot mm. um, at high temperatures, basically boiling them for about you know 20 to 30 minutes before I eat them. Not only is that easier for me to eat the, the nuts like every morning for breakfast, but uh, I I feel like I, I digest it better. It's more uh, palatable to do, to eat it that way. I mean, I I'm I'm able to eat uh, like a cup or more of nuts a day because I'm soaking them in water and then cooking them. But if, if I was to eat those raw every single day, th- that's difficult to do. A lot of work. And you might, you might actually be getting um, a little bit of too much lectin by doing that. So if you think about what we talked about with the soy episode and the isoflavins, when you alter the hydration status of soy, you increase the isoflavin content, right? So maybe maybe that holds true with lectins as well. Maybe when you dehydrate or you have a less water in something, you increase the level of lectins. So that's, I yeah. mean, and I don't know. I don't even know if there's any research on that. So, um, but back to the blue zone thing, uh, these are people that are living to 100 years of age not relying on med- modern medicine, 
and they're relying on traditional foods and look what they're eating. And if you look at, you know, some of the other like really healthy diets that have been identified uh, globally, the Okinawa diet, the Japanese traditional diet, the Mediterranean diet, um, all of these things have a common thread of having high legumes, high fruit, high grains, Mm -hmm. high vegetables, right? And why are they, why do they have a diet like that? It's because that's what works. It's sustainable. They don't have, um, industrial production of grains and legumes to feed to animals. Yeah. They just don't have that luxury that we have. Right. So, you know, if you don't have the option, um, to raise animals to such a massive scale, you're essentially going to eat the things that we're feeding our animals, which is legumes and grains. And that's pretty good for you, turns out. So then back to your question, Dan, about what do lectins do in the body? Let's talk about the good now, because there's a lot of research that shows a diet high in legumes, a diet high in low grains, a diet high in nuts are all associated with the reduction of cardiovascular de- disease, weight loss, and type 2 diabetes. And we will put these studies up on our show notes so you can you can look at those. Um you Talk know, about fiber rich. And I was just going to say that. the way to go. Yeah, the, very high in vitamin B, very high in protein, fiber rich, high in minerals, high in healthy fats. You want to um, have sustained energy throughout the day? Yeah. yeah. Beans and nuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, a like, t-shirt. Eat your <laughs> beans and nuts. Stop yeah. bean bashing. You know, like... Like talk about the spiking of blood sugar and how that relates to diabetes. Mm-hmm. If you're eating a fiber rich diet of beans and nuts, mm-hmm. you're having this hearty, high, like high protein, high fiber, high mineral, high vitamin yeah. food yeah. that's going to keep your energy levels, you know, stable yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. And that's the key to uh, keeping your blood sugar from spiking and then also from, you know, from falling down so that you have these like incredible hunger yeah. um, cravings yeah. for sugar. Yeah. So, you know, and then, uh, Dan, I also, I also found some research that showed the opposite of what the plant paradox is telling us. So, uh, some research that I found shows that some of the basic functions of lectins include cell to cell adherence, which means this goes oh. against that yeah. separation of cells leading to leaky gut. This is some of this research is showing that what? you know a diet high in lectins is keeping those tight junctions between. So think of your teeth, right? The space between your teeth. The farther apart that space gets, the more problems you're going to have, right? More things can kind of get in. So this is this is some of this research is saying that the more lectins you have, and the more that those lectins bind to the carbohydrates on the cell surface, the tighter those cells kind of stick together. So this is an opposition opposition of leaky gut. And other research shows that when you have lectin-carbohydrate interaction and active lectins, you have a reduction in inflammation. So this goes against everything that the book says. Wow. And this, there's also research that says that lectins help control program death of cells rather than exacerbate or accelerate program cell death. So it's what do lectin. lectins do in the body? We I'm still we, confused, we right? We don't we don't understand it yet, but there's this whole empire being built on on lectins. Um, you know, any research paper you pick up on legumes, you will see that they are all healthy adaptations that happen when you eat diets high in legumes. Um, you know, a great article in Applied Physiology, Nutrition and Metabolism shows that you know, diet high in lectin improves blood lipid levels, which means your triglycerides drop, blood pressure decreases, inflammatory markers decrease. Um, you know, you have lower glycemic um, complications in in the blood. Um, so, like anti diabetic, anti diabetic, right? You have greater glycemic control and greater like. glycemic tolerance throughout the body. So, you know, and if you abandon lectins and you move towards whatever the alternative is because i don't know because it's everywhere now, it's right? A, right it's a, if you're eating more meat and more cheese and more milk because you're trying to substitute and replace what you're not eating in plants and all that now you're still getting lectins you're increasing your saturated fat consumption cholesterol consumption putting yourself at risk for all of these diseases and fiber your fiber and your fibers be... down right right you want to you want to avoid like certain colon cancers right eat lots of fiber right, Col- right? colorectal cancers yeah. are associated with low fiber uh, yes. diet yes specifically processed meats like you know bacon and sausage 
So, but when you but when you have those diseases, you were told not to eat fiber because your body can't handle it anymore. Right. It's it's adding fuel to the fire. Um, it's pretty insane. Um, and you know, if you think about fiber, the benefits of fiber, and there are many benefits. Um, think of it like you have if you have a lot of fiber in your diet, that's constantly passing through your intestine and cleaning it out. It's scouring it. You know, carbon which is kind of what cellulose is made of, that's the fiber you're eating. You can't really digest fiber, but it has an incredible use in your gut to clean up all the stuff that could cause cancers within your intestine. So having a regular amount of roughage, fiber, cellulose, carbon, grabbing all those nasties that might try to stick to your intestine, it cleans them all out. And then, you know, that's what... That's what uh, excreting waste is supposed to do so the the more you reduce your fiber intake the more things start to get stuck and to build the, up to the lining of your intestine mm -hmm. makes sense and that's I get where it. that's where you run into problems i like that so wow. that's why they call it you know beans and fiber it's mother nature's broomstick it just it cleans you out so you yeah. know i get it um sp speaking of, uh, on that cleaning out and moving around um how how then with this knowledge how can i clean out and manage um my family's you know the, my approach my approach with all this is is you know things that i learn i, I put into practice uh, with myself as the human guinea pig first and then mm -hmm. introduce it to the family and mm -hmm. things have been working so I, should i be concerned how can i manage or at least pay attention and be aware of my family's lectin intake is that is that a thing i should be worried about um is there I guess I've, 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 I'm like answering my own question here, right? Like I had that question going into this and now it's like, it's not really an issue. So, yeah. So we don't, when we read things like this, we're our own worst enemies because we create illnesses, right? I mean, your family, all, all everyone's family, <laughs> whether you realize it or not, you've been eating lectins probably your entire life. Right. And we, as we talked about with soy, Soy is in everything, right? The food industry has made it that soy is a filler in everything. Your children have been consuming high levels of soy from their schools, right? The, the lunches they get at schools have a tremendous amount of soy filler in there. So if you haven't had gastrointestinal issues or gastric distress or ir IBS, whatever, anything that gives you an indication that you're having gastric issues, then it's a non-issue. Okay. Right. It's Great. really, it's really a non-issue. And you know, one way to approach it is you got to look at lectins as a relationship. Do I like lectins and do lectins like me? Right. And for the small population out there that is intolerant to lectins, they're not going to like you and you're going to know you're going to have physical things happening because from the get go, they don't like you. Right. Something mm -hmm. in your body is not okay with lectins. And there's, there's going to be a small population out there that has it, just like there's a small population with gluten. There's a small population with people who are allergic to eggs, a small population with people that can't have peanuts, right? Um, so that's what you got to ask yourself is, is when I, and if you want to get critical about it, you need to isolate, you know, maybe foods that have higher lectin content. Like if you're a vegetarian, you're going to have, you know, a big bowl of beans for dinner because that's what my family does. We eat a lot of beans. If every time I'm eating beans, I don't feel good, then that's telling me that lectins don't like me. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a real easy way to kind of approach this. And then Mike, if you want to talk about, you know, beating a dead horse, if you're worried about high levels of lectin, what do we do? Then, you know, make sure that you're cooking your food. Buy a pressure cooker. Take yeah. the take the thinking out of it, right? Right. <laughs> I I I um I empathize with the, the raw food movement, but there's a limit to what you should be eating raw. You know, so I kind of um I kind of insist on raw greens, you know, especially the really tender greens. But cooking is a wonderful thing and it should be learned it's it's an art. And, you know, if if it's difficult for you to properly cook things like, you know, nightshade plants or your legumes, get an instant pot. It makes it easy for you uh, and convenient. So 
Um, Are you sponsored by Instapot, by the way? No, no, I, I no, have it. Instapot is not paying me to say this. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, not, a, not I'm, yet, I'm but, a happy yeah, customer, but we're willing. <laughs> Instapot, <laughs> my Instapot count is 14 right now for Mike, but oh, no, <laughs> that's great though. Okay, the Instapot, or yeah. what about canned beans? What, what's going on with canned beans? Yeah, I mean, canned beans have already been pressure cooked for you. Okay, I mean, you know, you could argue that the sodium content can be a little bit high on that. Wash them. But yeah, you can yes. rinse them in, in the sink. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it is actually cheaper to buy dry beans and then cook them yourself. Um, but if you don't have time, then just get a, get a can of beans and you're good to go. They're already cooked for you. And build your, build your salad bowl with some beans and rice at the bottom. Okay, so sprout, sprouting. Ferment. Yeah, so you sprout, uh, you reduce the lectin, lectin content by sprouting. You know, uh, so keep it. Uh, keep it with the low lectin beans. And how would I sprout? What what do I do at home to sprout? So you can get you can get a jar uh, and fill it with mung beans or lentils, soybeans. Uh, you rinse it w uh, once or twice a day, and then you're you're um, in a sense you're leaching out the lectin content of the beans. So by sprouting them, you can reduce lectin content by fifty percent. And that's more. just one day in water. Is that what that's you're... that's uh, I would say between three and four days. Okay. Um, if you cook them, you reduce the lectin content by almost a hundred percent. So, you know, I wouldn't say if you're gonna eat if you want to eat raw sprouted beans, stick to the mung bean, the lentil, the soybean. If you want to eat um, black beans, pinto, um, and uh, especially kidney beans, you gotta cook them. You know in a pressure cooker um, and uh, these are these are um, easy problems to fix these are just these are the these are things that we've solved you know over a hundred years ago yeah all right so, so again there's we have way other things to worry about in our lives than than this right yeah, yeah I mean go you know let's let's go to you know Ethiopia where they eat a lot of lentils right there's not a lot of food in Ethiopia, right? We, we've known that for 20, 30 years. Let's go there and tell them that uh, you probably shouldn't be eating lectins, right? Another first world problem, you know, and, and so for families, for families that are worried about this, you know, I need to make sure that you understand that like real data that was created by real scientists and actually published in peer reviewed medical journals have demonstrated time and time and time again that the more we increase our portions of fruit, vegetables, legumes, and grains, the less risk of disease we have and the longer we live. And it's this, also better for the planet. It, it, right, right. But if it's, you want to talk about how do you how do you reduce climate change and our, our impact on climate change, it's a plant-based diet. Yep. Because the more meat you eat, the more fossil fuel we need to use to grow the legumes, to feed the animals, to house the animals, to transport all clear. That food. And think of think of those resources if we took that and applied it to I mean, I hate to say it, but some of the animals in CAFOs are being fed better and sheltered better than our homeless population in LA. These animals, right? Like it, they're, sure. they're they're you know, it, we need to take those resources and redistribute them better, right? Like yeah. and we're not doing it. Well, uh, you guys have uh, eased my stress on the lectin situation. Uh, again, there's way other uh, more important things to worry about. But is is the poisoning serious? I heard you say if you ate uh, a handful of kidney beans or one or five kidney beans, you could die. Now, this is raw, hard as concrete kidney beans. I don't know if I could ever get that down. But other than other than that, is it is there? <clears throat> Let's start that over. Other than that, is it serious? Is is the lectin scare, lectin poison? No. Serious? It's. I think it's blown out of proportion, okay. and I think it's blown out of proportion to increase sales of the book, to increase, you know, how many people are going to, um, certain websites and certain podcasts, and uh, you know, it's just another a fear campaign to drive up sales. Wow. Yeah. Who's going to go? You know. So. You mentioned the rawest food population, right? 
right. potentially they're at a greater risk. But, you know, let's, comp- I mean, and I don't have this information in front of me. I don't even know if it exists. This is something we can look into and possibly put on show notes. Or if you want to email us, uh, we can get this information to you. Uh, Mike, do you know the difference between the lectin content of, let's say, the seed in a zucchini versus a kidney bean? It's, you know, is it substantially lower, right? So, you know, yeah. if you think of the rawest population, they're, they're still not eating, you know, beans, beans have been like the primary focus of like the lectin poisoning scare. Right. But we know that we physically can't eat nor digest raw beans. Right. So that let's move that from the equation. So, you know, if you're eating a diet high in raw seeds, such as, you know, the rawest that are eaten like raw zucchini, lots of tomatoes. What else? What other things? Raw nuts. Raw nuts. Um, you know. Or in, in potentially um, high amounts of sprouts. So okay. like sprouts to me are something that would do well as a garnish as opposed to the main course. Mm. So, you know, I love sprouts, but eat them in moderation. If you want to eat more of them, cook them. Okay, put, so, put them in your stir fry. So we can kind of move that into the question dan asked about like how to help my family right if potentially so okay so raw so sprouts we want in moderation it's just kind of like a garnish you're gonna have them raw right yeah like with tomatoes you know yeah don't eat pounds of tomatoes raw eat you know a few um you know that are chopped up mixed in with a much bigger meal yeah but don't grab the tomato and just start eating like this no don't eat your tomato like an apple because (laughs) i'm guilty of that though (laughs) <laughs> you know what though like how how often do oh, you really do that once every four months apparently you know some people like to eat um you know, kathleen was telling me she, um her mom likes to eat raw potato you know like because it's it's like this nice crunchy is that possible treat yeah i've i've, I've done that before but you know am i eating a whole raw potato <laughs> no for lunch i'm just eating like once one yeah. like a couple bites because it's kind of uh it's like eating like raw dough before you before you oh, bake yeah. it you know, it's just yeah. like Wait, this cookie little... dough. Uh, <laughs> sure, I mean it's this little treat. It's not your main. It's not your main course, uh, so it's not something to worry about. You know, what's exciting to me is the idea that uh, we have a human planet now. We have more humans than ever before, so a plant-based diet is more important than it has ever been. And if we, as a human species, want to get, you know. Um, if we want to become a class one civilization right now, we're class zero, you know, we're, we're barely getting off the ground right now. If we want to get into space, start exploring the galaxy and, and, you know, do some really exciting adventuring in this universe, we need a a plant-based diet to make that happen. If we, if we are stuck eating meat, um, we're going to be stuck on this planet as it, as it slowly dies and we with it. So, um, you know, the next hundred years, we're going to be in starships, you know, growing greens and growing plants for our main diet. We're, you know, can you imagine? Unless we're going to create you, starships for CAFOs. The CAFOs <laughs> shoot them up there as well. Like, Can you imagine yeah. raising uh, industrial, you know, meat on a starship? Well, what That's, are they going to eat? What, what are the animals going to eat? We're going to need several other starships <laughs> to create soybeans right, to feed the damn animals. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to do that. So, yeah, future humans are going to be, you know, plant powered on starships. That's that's really cool, I think. And in order for us to make that happen, we need to educate ourselves. And um, the more minds that we can uh, get on this issue, the, the quicker we can create a cool, super technological world. Yeah. Educating ourselves you know, is a key word there. It's it's hard trying to save humanity and save lives at 5 a.m. in the morning. It's a, it's a tough, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it's someone's, it's a tough gig. Um, and uh, you know, for you know, Dan, for the non-believers, now that you've sat here and you've heard this, like, what what would you say in closing? Like, we have way too many other things to worry about. Like, let's let's focus on things that are actually going to help our bodies, help our families, and help our environment. Yeah, and, you know, like this is like. Just get the, it's, it's, it was hard for me because I couldn't discern like things that I need to be paying attention to and things that I don't need to be paying attention to. And this was jumping out at me and I didn't, and other people are asking me and I I don't, I don't know the answer. So like, this is, 
It's another it's distraction. It's One of you guys said that. It's it's just a yeah. And who knows what's the driving force? Yeah, like in our media. <laughs> wow. Gentlemen, it's uh, about time to go make some uh, lunches for our children and get mm-hmm. them to school. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. so I-, I wanted to ask you guys in closing, if you guys had any other thoughts you wanted to add. And the only thing uh, that I wanted to remind myself was to, uh, the takeaway for myself was to soak, ferment, and cook yep. your legumes. And then what else? Uh, go to your go to go and get your greens and beans from your favorite farmer's market. Definitely. At Water Village. <laughs> right? I've got um, your sprouts for you. Yeah, <laughs> I got your sprouts. <laughs> and for in, you. in closing, for me, if you're going to read this book and you're going to lead, live a lectin free diet, I urge you to do what you would do in any medical situation get a second opinion. Do not listen to one person's weaponized, uh, bean bashing you know book on how we should not eat lectins and avoid them completely and buy his supplements he's a doctor if you were to see a doctor and they were to tell you something you didn't agree with you would get a second opinion and i'm urging listeners to do so on this do not remove lectins and beans and legumes from your diet they will have more that action will be more harmful than beneficial so get a second opinion and that's all i have to say i like that well on that note, we are the Plant Based Riot. Um, we got some cool things coming up for you guys soon. Um, uh, mastering your farmer's market and sugar and plant powered pets is coming soon. So stay tuned for those guys. That's going to be really cool. We are uh, Plant Based Riot. Thanks, plant eaters. Uh, check in weekly for the new garden episodes coming your way. Uh, now put down the podcast and grow something. Um, you are making the choice to live a longer, healthier, disease-free life. What are you going to do with those extra years? <laughs> Not bash beans. Not bash beans. <laughs> Done. Cup of beans a day. <laughs> Fantastic. Love Instant Pot. <laughs> Plant-Based Riot Podcast is your weekly dosage of healthy lifestyle awareness. This show has been written and recorded by Plant-Based Riot, Brian, Mike, and Dan. Our program is produced by Greg Hennigan, a.k.a. the Mike Ditka of Guitar Teachers. Say hello to Greg at gregsguitarlessons.com. Research and data that we talk about will be linked in the show notes. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to Plant Based Riot on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review, a few stars, or tell a friend. Until next time, start growing your backyard garden.